Hello and welcome back to another episode of our series Saving My Disaster Campaign. My name is Saiken and we're going to take a look at a very special campaign. It's been a while since I have reviewed campaigns, but quite frankly I couldn't pass on this one. A Reddit user asked me to look into it and uh, we uh, found out relatively uh, soon that he's pretty much in a tough spot. I've never seen a similar campaign, so I figured it might be fun to look at it. Basically, if you look at the strategic layer, we're in the end game of um, XCOM. Um, he has almost uh, failed uh, with the Avatar project. I continued uh, doing that and there isn't much time left, so once the bubble is, um, has filled up, the Avatar project essentially means that you have lost the game. There are four facilities, uh, one in Indonesia, one in Australia, one in East uh, in Asia. Unfortunately, all of these areas he had lost making uh, contact uh, to, so uh, it's really a, a shame. We can regain contact, but it'll take uh, some time. And one of them in North America, same uh, deal here. It's theoretically possible to uh, make contact, but it will take some time. Okay, so long story short, none of those can currently help us to reduce the Avatar project. Uh, he do, uh, does have uh, two of the Golden Path missions, the Black Side mission and the Codex Brain uh, mission. The Codex Brain mission is the only thing that we could theoretically do. So that's it. Now, that's that. if you think that is bad news, then wait for it. It gets worse uh, than that. If we're looking at the current soldiers, there is no one in the roster. And you might ask yourself, like, how is that even possible? Well, let me show you how this is possible. Uh, during the campaign, when you're tired or hungry, he unfortunately managed to lose over a hundred soldiers. I've never seen such a meat grinder, but I give him kudos for continuing to try because that's really... I continue to preach, con just try, 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 make sure that you reach the end game. For whatever reason, unfortunately for him, even though he reached the end game, it wasn't enough to, uh, yeah, kind of continuously stay there. Most of the fallen uh, soldiers are of lieutenant and captain rank, so it tells me that he uh, wins a mission or two. Um, uh, most of them are not dead on the first mission, but then there is always this one operation uh, where he completely gets uh, racked. For instance, Operation Soaring Death, it's one, two uh, down, well, uh, Fooling Whale, another um, two down. So it seems that he's uh, losing a, a Foolish Whale even three down, so it seems that he's four holy shit that must have been a bad mission uh, can we sort by operation oh yeah so if you look at it four kills on operation bloody wheel three on uh, operation bone beast operation uh, doom dance was a complete doom dance so he essentially lost uh, two uh, psi operatives a spark the entire team just got wiped foolish whale almost an entire uh, team wipe as well um, Operation Nightfall. So you get the point. I, I, he clearly has a problem extracting when things are going south. Um, so he's not only uh, losing the mission, but also losing a lot of people, uh, making it even worse. We have nothing more to research, that's the good news. Uh, so we do have plasma uh, weapons, power armor. The bad news is we do have 35 supplies, which is hilariously low. So uh, that's really it. Uh, there is one theoretical soldier here in the training for Psy Operative. I'm not going to um, change that at the moment. Um, uh, it doesn't tell me how long it... Uh, well, maybe I am going to change uh, that. So... Yes, we want to pause the training. Well, it seems that that soldier... It's a bit bugged for whatever reason. Not sure what he did there. Anyways, back to the campaign. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to need is money. Lots of it. Which means we're going to visit the black market and let's hope that there's uh, a high level soldier available for intel. That'll be nice. Yeah, there's a scientist and unfortunately with, with 50 intel 
There isn't much that we could uh, that we could do. A um, couple of PCSs. That's not really something that helps us at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to sell inventory. Um, get rid of the Illyrium. Get rid of a lot of the alien alloys, unfortunately. We'll eventually need it later. But at the moment, when the whole campaign is at stake, uh, we're not even going to think about keeping that. Uh, Elven Trooper corpses are pointless. So faceless corpses, Viper corpses, and Sectoid corpses are the ones that you would want to keep. Um, faceless corpses for Mimic Beacons, Viper corpses uh, clearly for um, uh, for medkits, and Sectoid corpses for Mine Shields. That's the only thing that you need at the moment. Um, he has luckily a few of them, so we're fine. I'm going to sell off a lot of the other corpses. Crystal corpses I am going to keep uh, them because maybe since we're uh, fighting against um, chrysalids we might end up using uh, them. So 600 supply is what we got. First things first, let's start hiring soldiers with it. We only got rookies, so that is what we'll get. Um, Brian here looks competent. Benjamin definitely looks competent. Claire is in and Maria is in. So that's six. Um, taking a seventh one as well, uh, just in case. Uh, so we're taking one of our uh, soldiers. And you can see that the game is giving us um, even the option to recruit um, skirmishers and a Templar. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we would want. Fortunately, we need a, a sergeant for that. Um, and he seemed to have lost those. So what we're going to do instead, I would like to get the facility lead. Again, sergeant needed. So we're going to go for a breakthrough research, um, take our rookie there, put another um, soldier, uh, another scientist there, and this is as good as it gets. Unfortunately, there's a chance for an ambush, and there's also a chance of getting injured, but so be it. From a build order perspective, he started with Resistance uh, Ring in Guerrilla Tactics School. That's a good start. I don't get it why he uh, continued with a laboratory that late. If you want to take a laboratory rush, begin with it and don't do it uh, kind of in the second row. Also, lab rushes um, means uh, that you are getting an advantage in the research compartment, but you get a disadvantage in not having your troops completely outfitted. I would much rather go for proving ground early and get the best equipment if you're struggling with emissions. The defense metrics here came way too early. The rest somewhat looks fine. Training center again way too, uh, way too late in my perspective should have been instead of the defense metrics up there. Um, okay, so we got still got money left over. Let's build some items. We got 400 supplies. Uh, first things first, we're going to take as many Mimic Beacons as we can get. Three in this case, which is good. Um, those are going to be our saving graces. Since we're fighting against chrysalids, I would take two medkits, just in case. And we're going to take one blue screen rounds um, to deal with the gatekeeper. I would actually like to take a second blue screen round, so we need to sell more. I should see if any of the troops have been keeping count on alien kills. Might be a useful. Let's get back to the black market. Almost. All right, good enough. One more thing. Shall we go for? Uh, for a sensor, uh, it's probably the right play. 
but we do have a bit of a problem uh, with our rookies not being able to hit so I also need I also need the grenades the battle scanner would help us against the chrysalids a lot uh, in terms of armor um, the hell weave isn't bad that's why I want to keep the chrysalid corpses um, gives us health and returns uh, melee damage back to attackers and sets them on fire. That's pretty good, but I don't want to be hit in the first place, so we're not going to take that. Um, Axel here is going to be our heavy weapons guy, which means uh, we did have one Axel suit, which we're going to give him. And besides the Axel suit, an unsecured transmission from some clown calling himself Van Dorn. Doesn't sound like the kind of recruit. Since he's in the front, let's give him a nanomed kit. That makes him immune against the chrysalids uh, poison attack. So that'll be fine. Max Richter, uh, Richter here uh, is going to be one of our medics. All of the others are taking mimic beacons for now. Maria here is going to take the prototype uh, rifle. Uh, the good part, so the good uh, part about the prototype pl plasma rifle is uh, if you play through the legacy pack, you will get one weapon, so prototype weapon of every single type. Um, I just assume that uh, this guy hasn't played through the legacy pack, which is uh, which means he didn't have those weapons available, so they are still available to me which is good, um, even uh, even better in this case. Um, so I take it any advantage that I can get at this point. Um, and we're having a second, uh, second damage dealer um, together with a plasma rifle with a stock upgrade. Does he have any other weapon upgrades? No, he, he just used them all. Okay, yeah, that's as good as it gets. Um, we do have two, uh, the two ladies have the blue screen rounds. Um, and the others have the mimic beacons. And everyone has a grenade, plus two nano med kits. That's pretty much what we will have when we're now entering. Uh, probably should have taken the... Um, the battle scanners they are super helpful but i decided against it i instead wanted to run one more grenade commander we'll need to have one of our troops equip the skulljack for use in the field if we're going to make any progress all right so that's uh, the team our heavy weapons guy will take the front we do have three Mimic Beacons, those will be our saving graces if things are uh, not going our way. And other than that, it's six rookies against uh, the AI. So let's take a look if I can make that happen. It's definitely going to be an enjoyable mission. Here we go. And here we go. We're, we've just landed. We're in a concealed position. It seems that he has the resistance order of an additional uh, of an additional uh, soldier coming in. Alice here is that additional soldier. She doesn't have a power armor, uh, but she does have a plasma rifle, so she's kind of an XCOM um, resistance operative. Uh, I'm not saying no to that, meaning we we're having position. seven instead of six soldiers. Oh, that's actually fine for me. First turn is going to be an aggressive move. I like the high ground here. We're probably not going to be able to use it though. Okay. We saw that there was an enemy back there. Let's try to get a bit better view on it. There we go. Wonderful. That's a priest and an advanced stun lancer. Okay. Copy that. 
group of hostiles over here. Okay, and the shield bearer, fair enough. Getting it done. Will do. Well, we're running out of good spots for cover. And those guys do have a pretty decent starting position. Let's see, what else do we have? That's one chrysalid right behind the ledge. Another one right behind the ledge. Just got to remember where they are. One near the gate. Another one near the gate. That's four. One left to the gate. That's five. One at the gate, that's six. Six chrysalids, three, so we're missing three other units. Okay, fair, fair enough. Okay, we're going to move up and we will start with a grenade. I'm not going to do a huge overwatch trap here but just given how well uh, the high ground bonus uh, works and given that they don't have cover uh, i can be persuaded into using a few overwatch shots okay so she's going to use the grenade um, Claire here is theoretically our backup uh, with a Mimic Beacon in case we're not getting them down. It's a much more difficult pick than, than one would uh, guess just from looking at it. Um, and I would say we're taking three Overwatch shots here. That's one. Alice here is two. And Benjamin here is number three. I do have still three more operators afterwards to work with. This here will take care of their uh, armor. And let's see how the engagement unfolds. They are fully shredded. Uh, two dodges, despite the fact that that he was in complete uh, in a complete open position. That stinks. All right. That's affirmative. Well, that's high, highest priority target is the stun lancer. Without a shadow of a doubt. Fortunately, he can dodge as well. Could position ourselves up here. We position ourselves here. We're in a flanked, uh, uh, flanked position. He, meaning the um, shield bearer, will use his uh, shielding ability first. I wish we could go to here. That'll be a nice little flanking position. Unfortunately, we can't. Grenade will not deal enough damage. Good All right. Moving on target. This is still a flanked position, but it is not completely in the open. And I'm banking on the fact that the AI again prioritizes. Uh, the shielding higher than using a flanking shot, um, meaning we can move up. Mm. 
And the real question now is do we want to use the Mimic Beacon to prevent any damage? would like to use them a bit later, but quite frankly, um, I, I had so many instances where I decided against using them and in the end um, I took a lot of damage and it just wasn't worth it. So here we go. Now we begin right in the open. 13 enemies also means we're going to deal with the Chosen. Uh, this uh, time it is the Hunter. Let's see what abilities he has. Weakness can be hit from high ground, that's good. Well, unfortunately, we don't have high ground at, um, oftentimes against him. We don't have Templars. Um, his strength takes Overwatch after ending its turn. That's a pretty, pretty big one because we will always need to remove Overwatch. Reveals concealed units, irrelevant, can summon advent troopers, that is pretty nasty. That deep in the game, it means he can at least summon three uh, troopers, and they are pretty strong. Stronger than our um, rookies. Um, and this here is really bad. Revenge chance to take return fire against miss shots means um, that we do have rookies, which are really bad in shooting, and on top of it, he's taking, uh, he can shoot back. Ouch, and he also regenerates just kind of the icing on the cake. I appreciate that. So normally, um, this is really not a big problem. But like I said, if if you do have um, only rookies, it starts becoming a problem. One of the chosen is here. That thing is only going to make trouble for us until we deal with it. All right. Both of them uh, went for the decoy, which is fine. They still have their, uh, they still have their abilities, uh, which definitely works in our favor. By the way, I don't want to go too close to the ledge. Taking high ground here, just to increase our chance of hitting. Let's go with the priest first. <sighs> depressing. Rookies are just so depressing. Position confirmed. Taking cover. We're taking the 90% shot. Good right. Just too good to not take it. So this here is our XCOM, oh no, that's not the um, resistance fighter. Brian was also not the resistance fighter. Damn it, I lost okay. track. Oh, here she is, that's the resistance fighter. I want to use her as bait because she's expendable, highly expendable. Got it covered. There we go, Alice. And yeah, let's move up. Solid copy. Good. We got one team down. Use the grenade and a mimic shot. beacon. I would say a bit below average, not completely critical uh, resource that we've lost, but the mimic beacon definitely is a fine resource. I don't want to uh, lose that right away.
The Chosen is a pretty good uh, indicator whether or not we're close to enemies. He does have Tracking Shot as an ability. What uh, most people don't know though is the Tracking Shot uh, works just as a normal squad side uh, would work. Meaning if there are no soldiers uh, um, of the enemy, so no Advent or Alliance, that are capable of seeing us, uh, he cannot use this ability. So, in other words, as long as he's just jumping from A to B, uh, we can be quite sure that we're not being spotted out. Taking high ground. And it's a good time to reload our guns. common mistake that I'm seeing a lot of newer players make is forgetting to reload their guns. Specifically, if you do have a lot of rookies, you gotta stay fully loaded. And this is a non-time mission, there is no excuse for not having a fully loaded gun. Now, one problem that I am going to run into, nonetheless, is this here is the ledge. And I think pretty much behind the ledge, down there and I think over here are going to be chrysalids. So we gotta be a bit careful um, as they might uh, start to engage onto us. So far we haven't triggered anything, that's good. Uh, since there are chrysalids, um, cover doesn't really matter as much, which is why you see me uh, positioning a lot of the soldiers really up on the ledge. I value high ground pretty highly. Specifically with the rookies. As many of them will have problems hitting and the plus 20 aim come in handy. So we got a nice little overwatch and we know oh, there's a chrysalid down here. Pretty much right there. Um, so the skewed um, motion uh, signal tells you it is close. And we have seen at the beginning that one was burrowing down here. So there is one. Uh, we can also see the outline of uh, the um, of the gate. We know one is here, one is here, one is burrowed uh, himself here, one is here, and one is here, if I'm not mistaken. So so let's very carefully continue to move up. Take a bit of a longer turn. One thing that you can do against chrysalids that are borrowed is just be on the edge of their uh, uh, range and frustrate them. At some point they will unborrow and eventually charge into you. We're carefully going to advance. I do understand that this here is not the most um, electrifying uh, gameplay, seeing over a uh, slight Overwatch crawl. But guys, we are so far uh, on the disadvantaged side um, that I will take any advantage that I can get. Okay, so still. No line of sight. Good. Slowly but surely going to Roger move that. up to here. Perfect. And with that, going to slowly shift our forces. Like I said, cover isn't primarily that important. I'm just trying to keep the distance to the chrysalid. And keep a couple of our guys in high uh, in high cover and uh, high ground. Okay. Good, everyone. Take an Overwatch. Seven Overwatches. And we know the crystal is there. Ish.
still can't see us, which is a good sign, meaning we can more aggressively move up. Enjoy these final breaths. Good copy, moving on target. I'm now moving into the open because I suspect there are really only chrysalids left over. Uh, just the amount of enemies that we have seen that were chrysalids, plus the pack, already make up for almost the entirety um, of the 13 enemies that are on this map. So we're probably only fighting against chrysalids here. Still no line of sight. Good. Starting to move down. Hasn't triggered anything. That's perfect. Moving up. Moving up. Moving up. Moving out. Confirmed. Closing on target position now. Location confirmed. Good. We got a pretty solid overwatch trap here. And now is where the battle scanner would have come in incredibly handy. Tracking shot means that Axel here had been spotted out. So I'm pretty much sure that something over here would have spotted him out. Axel is just moving out of the shot. And we're being careful. I want to understand where the enemies are. I'm just using triangulation to a degree to see where the enemies are. It's very likely that there is some uh, that there is a chrysalid board down there. There's nowhere to go. The most dangerous game. Interesting. On the move. Okay. Come on, Chrysalid. Get out of your hiding spot. Alright, so I'm pretty sure at this point that there uh, that the chrysalids can see us. Okay. Shouldn't trigger him yet. I'm I'm almost uh, certain that we're talking about this chrysalid here. Claire is going to take another spot. Moving on, Trying to move in. So the, how the tracking shot works is he's always tra uh, going to um, target the closest operative that he can see. Uh, by the way, that's Chrysalid. And that will attract it. Or kill it. Pretty nice overwatch. It's good. I like it. Still a tracking shot, so something can see us behind here. It's interesting. Which means probably from here. Let's do this. Got it covered. Back online. All right. I'm on it. Continuing to. Get the pesky chrysalids out. I know that they are there. Come out, come out wherever you are. Okay. Moving to designated 
I'm still convinced that the chrysalid will run into us. And the hunter just makes it a bit easier for us to uh, find out where the chrysalids are. It's just a matter of being patient. Again, I know uh, that with a better scanner we could have been faster. Um, but the better scanner is taken away a vital spot from a grenade. Or any other consumable. This technique here works as well, oftentimes. Worst thing that could happen is you're getting a bit too close to them. Not far enough. I'll give you a sporting chance. All right. Let's move up here. Changing it up a bit. One thing that I noticed is the Warlock is not targeting this operative uh, there, which means, similar to other abilities, he's only targeting the XCOM operatives, not the extra units. Uh, mm, she. Uh, mm. It's not triggering his abilities. One up. I am pretty sure that we're looking at a uh, chrysalid uh, right there. I'm going to change our position just a tiny bit. yet. Heading to that location. All right, moving up here. We're going to take this ledge. That's affirmative. It's a very solid position. Okay. One, two, moving three, four, five. Just a tiny bit closer. Good to go. Oh, I should have moved Axel. Still back there. It's time to make the elders proud. There we go. Shot wide. Nice. That's a pack of three chrysalids. Well, not necessarily nice, uh, no one likes chrysalids, but it's great that we can pull them into a trap. Good so, second chrysalid down. If we kill all of them, that would be four chrysalids down, um, plus three, so that's seven down. Meaning we're looking at five more. Here. Unfortunately, they are dodging. Drop and down. Out of the tracking shot. Unfortunately, also out of line of sight. I was pretty convinced we had line of sight. My mistake. All right, Claire here with her Mimic Beacon is going to be the saving grace. I think we can simply uh, stay on the high ground, to be honest. Come on. 
There we go. So we got Benjamin, Claire, and Alice. I think Alice needs to go back just a tiny bit. This here will do just fine. Ninety-five percent chance. It's pretty solid. Uh, seeing that the uh, resistance operators are even better than rookies with their stats. Reloading Benjamin. All right, come on, Benjamin. There we go. That's good. Didn't need clear. Reload. Overwatch and we're going to Overwatch. So that's four chrysalids down. Seven overall means we have five more chrysalids to go. And now we're going to engage with the Chosen. We've got the chosen in our sights. It's time to take them out. Ouch. Let's make this clean. Looks like you get another shot. The most dangerous game? Hardly. All right. Luckily, Axel here can heal himself. And he still has uh, activity left over. Gotta remove all of the cover up here. Shreds him. Oh, that's good. Overwatch re removed as well. So, Chosen is vulnerable. Sixty percent. Seems to be that that's as good as it gets. Moving closer. Let's move first because uh, he can, to my knowledge, re-enter Overwatch. Okay, let's see, let's see. Um, if we are going to go here, that'll be another flanking position. Good. I think Chosens are immune to Mimic Beacons. I haven't played with Mimic Beacons for ages. Solid shots on everyone. And Claire is going to just drop down here. That's good enough. Okay. Let's start. Alicia is the resistance operator, funnily enough, has the best chance of hitting him. That's a solid hit. Very nice. Come on. That looks good. Another 80% chance. He can also dodge. Oh, that's unfortunate. I 
Alright. We're going to kill him. Come on. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. That worked way better than I expected it would. present a challenge somehow. Great job, Commander. But there's no trace of that Chosen left. I've got a feeling we haven't seen the last of them. Still, at least we ruined their plans today. Of course. Just random charging into us. Perfect. Alright. We'll position ourselves here. Crystal of Poison is nasty. Uh, we only have one more charge with our medkit. Chrysalid Poison, unfortunately, forces you to immediately heal or take the consequence of taking damage. It, to my understanding, does not stop, so you will eventually die from it. That's the fifth. Good. Chrysalide, uh, chrysalide neutralized. Uh, 5 plus 3, that's 8. Uh, meaning we're looking at four more chrysalids. Headed there now. Ready to go. On my way. Moving overwatch. So so far we're okay. Still got four overwatches in case another chrysalid comes in. Yeah, of course. That's what happens. Can already see that everyone's missing. Yeah. So that'll be the first evac. Although, I think he had a medkit. Right? Yeah, means he's immune to poison. Am I going to risk that? I think the mad kid makes him immune to chrysalid poison. and immune to a chrysalis poison. I'm pretty sure. So I I am deciding to not evac him right away. But I will put him in a obvious spot over here just in case that he pops. Uh, we would be able to kill him easily. On the move. Moving up. Maria here takes point. Scanning. Good to go. Benjamin. Got it covered. Overwatches. Good to go. Reload Overwatch. Axel oh, Overwatches yeah, himself. Moving to designated coordinates. Scanning. Yeah, he's immune. Very nice. Okay, so, so, um, that was three, four, five, six chrysalids, nine, meaning 
uh, we're looking at three more crystals, one of um, which has just disclosed its location. Okay, chrysalids are much tougher than I would have anticipated with rookies. Alright, we need to get everyone on Overwatch. Next round I would um, start another reloading round and then we can continue. Okay, so everyone reloads. did she just do? She used her Mimic Beacon. I pressed the reload button and she decided to randomly use her Mimic Beacon. Wow, that is incredibly bad. Mimic Beacon is just somewhere below the ground. Okay, whatever. Interesting interaction. Moving, Moving a bit closer. And let's take a full overwatch again. We're knowing that uh, we already know that there is a chrysalid like, right there. We know it's only chrysalis, so we don't even need to care for cover at this point. Just want to make sure everyone is in Overwatch. Okay. Seems to be a chrysalis that somewhat went for the Mimic Beacon underneath the ground. At the same point, it seems for some reason that we've spotted it out-ish. I don't know, hard to tell. We got a grenade, just in case things are not working out. Got another grenade over here. Let's just move up and try to kill this guy. Okay, so he's definitely in level range. Um, he can be one shot with a grenade. Which means we don't need the Mimic Beacon. 
But of course, if we can just kill it with regular plasma weapons, that would be better. Enemy there we go. Down. Okay. Let's rock. Overwatch. Reload Overwatch and Overwatch. This should be the last one of them. No, that one was the last one. So. And we're at 13. Damn it. Alright, let me guess. No, we did not have. We did not have a med kit on him, meaning that's going to be an evac. I don't want to take any chances, but for the evac, let's make sure we're dealing the highest amount of damage that we can. No point in saving the grenade. Perfect. Perfect. Right, so that means we got rid of all of the enemies short of the gatekeeper. Got a mimic beacon and a grenade. Another grenade. Yeah, so that should be good enough for the gatekeeper. Yeah, that should be good enough for the gatekeeper. Good, no more enemies. We're carefully moving up without triggering the animation for the gatekeeper yet. And of course, we're reloading. Solid copy. Back online. There shouldn't be any more chrysalids. Ready to rock. Got it covered. Okay. So I want to kind of position myself here, that still shouldn't trigger it. Moving to designated position. Hitting there now. On the move. Understood, moving out. Very nice, okay. So everyone has full ammunition, which means we can trigger the gatekeeper next turn. Maximilian is going to be using his grenade. Benjamin here is going to be using his beacon. So let's move up. This is not triggering yet. I don't know the exact range. Heading out. Moving to position. Headed there now. Yeah, but it's never a bad idea. Understood. Be careful here. Heading to that location. So everyone is as close as possible. Come, 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 come. 
for Overwatch. Right. This probably should trigger it. Again, not okay. Interesting. Uh, which means we could take our position over here. No, that has triggered it. I'm not sure. What this definitely looks promising. That's not the same rift the Codex used when it appeared. This thing could lead anywhere. It may not even be pointing at Earth. As with most things, we'll likely need to bring it back to the ship for further examination. All right. Good. Don't want to cluster up too much. Still be a hit. Can I go for full cover somehow? I could go over here, but mm, I think we're still staying where we are. This is good enough. Nice little first bit of damage. Alice is out. the sacrificial lamb. So we got quite a few uh, shots onto this guy before he can act. And with blue screen rounds, the damage is actually quite good. Gotta be a bit careful that we're not clustering up too much. Unfortunately, a gatekeeper is incredibly hard to hit. Taking half cover, knowing farewell that I could have full cover here, but I, like I said, I don't want to cluster up too much. And next round, we gotta kill it. There's the Mimic Beacon. It'll probably use its eye ray. Yep. Fire's getting close here. Okay. Since hitting it is very hard, I'm even willing to leave cover. That was uh, that was um, surprisingly hard mission. So we got a few wounded soldiers, but no one got killed, which is important in this campaign. It is already a, a harsh meat grinder. Gotta uh, make sure that we keep the casualty count low. All right. Let's take a good look. We're going to have the first promotions. So no longer are we going to deal with rookies. Are incredibly resilient. Despite our victory over them today, They're nice, clear. He's becoming our sharpshooter and she got genius combat intelligence, which is even better. So she's going to get a lot of APs. Nice, got a sniper. Uh, our frontline soldier Axel has become a specialist. That is good as well. Six days out of service. Another sharpshooter. 
Maria has uh, become a Grenadier. There is our Ranger. Love it. And another Specialist. Okay, so we got two Specialists, a Ranger. Specialist, Specialist, Sharpshooter, Sharpshooter, Grenadier, Ranger. I guess that's a fine uh, team. But in fact, it's actually a pretty damn good team by thinking about it. Uh, two Specialists are absolutely fantastic. Uh, two Sharpshooters just for dealing uh, damage are fine. And yeah, I think I'm okay with that. The distinctive alien artifact Got the Psionic Gate. Resembles a portal or gateway of some kind. Although we believe it and we reduce the avatar progress by two, which is what we really wanted to do. Phew, alright. In order to analyze the alien psionic gateway we recovered, we will need to make the appropriate modifications to the shadow chamber first. Okay, he seems to not have really looked into any of that. Um, Oh, I see. He has um, researched all of that, but we gotta build up the Psionic Gate, and that'll cost 200 supplies, which we currently do not have. Well, that's fine. That's okay for now. Um, let me color code uh, the soldiers real quick, and then we're going to see what our next target is going to be. So, now that we got a bit of a breathing room, what we would want to see is uh, that our remaining soldiers recover and we need additional intel uh, to make contact here in East Asia. Uh, luckily the game knows that we need intel so it offers us to even scan for it. So our next job is getting intel and then making contact with the region to further reduce the avatar progress. Continue to make progress on the avatar. Uh, hopefully that is enough. To slow them down, we'll need to move fast. You should recognize the simplicity of these tactics, Commander. For they are the same as those you will employ against the Avatars. Well, covered ops mission had been uh, disturbed, so it takes a little bit longer. Evans improved their threat response. Guaranteed reinforcements. I'm not afraid about that. And a lot of return fire. Well, look at that. Perfect. That's exactly what we needed now. A landed UFO. Um, that means if we were able to pull off this mission, it's not only a promotion for most of our guys, but on top of uh, it, we would be able to um, get a lot of Elarium um, uh, alloys and a couple of other tools uh, that are helpful. 11 enemies, meaning we're probably going to have uh, the assassin uh, within here. Um, but yeah, I think that's generally fine. So we're definitely going to go there. And that is happening in our next episode. Uh, let's just double check. Yeah, we will need two additional uh, rookies. There we go, that's one. And let's take him. Good. So, two additional rookies. I'll prepare them for the next mission and we're going to engage with uh, the um, downed UFO. Thank you for watching. As always, leave your comment uh, down below. This is going to be a multi-part uh, series where we are trying to get the campaign back on track and then eventually send it back to uh, the Reddit user. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.